Hello all, I'm Sai and you're watching the Book Dragon. In today's video, I'm bringing to you 10 books which start out a bit rough, but as you keep reading them, they get far better. I'm sure that many people DNF these books in the beginning because they don't see much happening in the first 100 pages I can say of the book. But when you cross that mark, they just get far better and very much worth your time. So without any further ado, let's get into the books right away. The first book that I'm recommending today is An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. Now, this is a book which is totally dark fantasy, but it happens in a desert setting. So I can say that it is a desert fantasy. Now we deal with two main characters between whom we switch perspectives continuously throughout the book. Our main character here is Laya who is 16 years old and she is a scholar and she lives in this empire where scholars are treated very low and there are rankings inside the community itself according to which each and every person is treated and we have our other main character Elias who is 20 years old and he is in training to become a mask which is the highest posting to which a soldier can go in order to protect the kingdom as a whole and now he has some conflicts with the way in which the empire works and Daya is also a person who has suffered a lot along with her family because of the empire and there's a certain point during which both of these characters lives intersect and they have to work together trusting each other even though the others not trustworthy for both of them it starts out slow in the first 100 pages because there's a lot of info dumps there but as the story progresses it is super engaging and very very fast paced next we have theft of swords by michael j sullivan now this is an adult epic fantasy and it's the first book in the raira revelations trilogy now this is a really huge book so i can understand that once people don't get so many things that are action-packed happening in the first few hundred pages they'll not be motivated to continue on with the book but i'm sure that if you can just get past those 50 or 100 pages during which most of the things don't make sense at all everything will come back together and you'll just see this beautiful friendship between these two main characters royce and hadrian who are like top class thieves that can steal anything without leaving the trace that they were there in the place of the theft it's basically a story which shows us the theft of two swords hence it's called theft of swords but the most important part which i want to highlight about this book is that the friendship is super awesome okay it is very original and very compelling to read it is also funny in many multiple instances okay though it is epic fantasy it does not go to grim dark territory at all it is very cozy and super funny at times so if you are looking forward to read something like that please do go forward and pick this up it will be a rocky start but i'm sure that you will enjoy the rest of the book completely next we have the hobbit by jr tolkien now this is the prequel to the lord of the rings but i can say that this is far easier to read compared to the lord of things because we just follow a single storyline continuously and we have the main character of us called Bilbo Baggins who is a hobbit and he has put into this quest along with 13 dwarves by this magical wizard named Gandalf. It is also a bit rocky in the beginning because we don't see many stuff happening at all. It's just a whole adventure that is written throughout a book. The one thing that most people will find difficult while reading The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings is that it is super descriptive but once you get the hang of it and get past those descriptions and start enjoying the story it is a super wonderful adventure to enjoy completely and by the end of the book I'm sure that you will end up loving Bilbo as well as the 13 dwarfs because the friendship that they form in the time that they spend together is very pure if you are in the middle of the Hobbit and think of giving it up please don't do it because towards the end it will definitely be worth all the time next we have a contemporary romance and it is boyfriend material by Alexis Hall now this is a male male romance which is very similar to red white and royal blue but I can easily say that this is far better compared to that book that book totally focuses on the romance alone but here we get to learn a lot more about the two characters as individuals and they feel like real life people. It is also something which happens in a super specific situation just like in Red, White and Royal Blue but I can say that this one has a lot more substance and conflict to it compared to that one. If you are a person who likes reading quality contemporary fiction I'm sure that you will like this book because it is drawn out and written very very slowly. Nothing goes on fast at all. In the beginning it just feels like a very ordinary romance book but as you flip the pages and continuously read the book it gets better and better and towards the end the author just ends it in the perfect way. I also like the way in which the author does not take pages or immense amounts of times just investing us in the romance alone. She makes things happen to the characters separately and compels us to understand them properly so that we like them as people rather than just liking their romance. So in the beginning it will be slow and it will be slow as you proceed also but it gets far too better as you just keep on reading and towards the end it will be a wonderful book that you have read. Next we have Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Now this is a reimagining of Alice in Wonderland story by Marissa Meyer but we don't focus on our main character Alice in this one. We focus on the antagonist of that story who is the Queen of Hearts. We get to know how the Queen of Hearts became such a cold-hearted nasty villain and why she does not open up for anyone at all in any way. Now this is a book which is sad as well as super well written okay i'm sure that the author has made use of each and every element 
of the original sins of Wonderland and put her own twist to each and every element, thus making it her own story. It will be sad to read, but you'll not be able to keep it down at all because it is super well written. And the way in which the author has even used all the original characters from Alice in Wonderland in this one is also fantastic because I'm sure that I cannot think of any other way in which all those characters can be properly used without just using them for the sake of using them. It is whimsical as well as dark and sad. So in the beginning, it might just feel like a book with beautiful writing, but towards the end, it just becomes a tragic mess, which is sad as well as super excellent to read. Next, we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by the e. Schwab. This is one of the most famous books from 2020 and it just stands up to each and every one of its expectations because the work that V.E. Schwab has done with this book is phenomenal, okay? The main concept of this book is that we have this 23-year-old woman named Addie LaRue who lived in the 1700s in a small village named Vion in France and what happens is when she's 23 years old, she is to be married to a person whom she does not want to get married to and she ends up asking a wish from this god who appears after the dark and what happens is the wish that she gets is she'll not be remembered at all by anyone in the world. This might seem like a very tricky concept but the way in which the author explores it and makes use of it for the story is really really beautiful. The writing of the author is also super rich. There are some smart moves that the main character in this story does and they are all very very engaging. It is slow in the start and confusing to understand this curse but as the author builds up the story and switches in between the past and present because we have 300 years of life that has been experienced by Addie in this one. It will take some time to read because it is slow in the beginning and the pacing keeps on varying throughout the story but as a whole the book will be wonderful to read. The next book is one which is a combination of three different genres and they are thriller, mythological fiction and science fiction put together and the book that I'm talking about is Keepers of the Kala Chakra by Ashwin Samhi. Now we have this main character named Vijay who works as a physics professor in a university. During this time he gets an offer from a really huge company and he goes into it. There are multiple things which happen to Vijay while he is working in that particular company and he is caught in the midst of something which he didn't know the scope of at all. There are multiple instances during which the book feels super frustrating because it is very very info dumpy okay. In the first half of the book itself I can say that the author you makes use of a lot of info dumps. It just feels like why the f are you even talking about all these stuff without actually telling me the story. But once you get to the end of the story you just understand why all of these things have been talked by the author in such elaborate detail in the beginning. It is a bit frustrating during those times but if you are a person who likes to read intensively and learn stuff like that, I am a person like that and I enjoyed it the whole time, you will definitely enjoy this. It is definitely a nail biting thriller which will just make you continuously flip the pages. I also have a dedicated review for this one. If I have reviews for any of the books, all of them will be linked down in the description. You can go and check them out if you are interested. So if any of the things that I just said about feels intriguing to you, please do go forward and pick this. It will be a rocky start but Towards the end, it will be super satisfying. Next, we have a literary fiction and it is An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. Now, this is a book in which we see a separated couple in which the male is actually imprisoned for a few years and then he returns for his wife. But after this, what happens is there is a friction in their marriage and they both separate. That's just the basic plotline of the book which happens in the first 50 to 100 pages. But after that, the rest of the book is the actual story which takes place. We get to see three different love stories which involve various different people, sometimes even the same people. That's what actually makes the conflict element of the book far more compelling. We also have this Barry and Iris kind of relationship just like in The Flash that is going on in this one. I'll not spoil it for you guys but when you read it, you'll be able to understand it perfectly because it's just exactly like that but it's not shown in a healthy way. The thing which will drive many people to close the book in the beginning itself is that it will just seem like a very normal usual story for those first 50 to 100 pages when you see these two people separating from the marriage and breaking their marriage properly. Do go forward and try this one. I'm sure that you will not regret reading it. The next book is Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. Now this is a book which is also a literary fiction and here we deal with the friendship between two women. It is a book which is just under 500 pages long but for that length there's a lot going on in this book. You might think that for such a normal sized book how can there be many many things happening within this one but it is a book which shows the stories across 30 years okay. So we spent three complete decades with these two women who have maintained their friendship very very strongly throughout all these years. We start to see them when they are teenagers and we get to experience their life as they are growing. The part which will be annoying for most people 
or at least it was annoying for me was that we start with the teenage part so it is a bit irritating to read their story during that time but as they grow and become adults as they start realizing their dreams and when their paths diverge and when they converge together because of various reasons and the heights that they attain in each respective career is super good to read okay towards the end it will also be a book which will make you cry in order to experience all those things you just have to make it through that teenage part because it is totally worth it the last and final book in this list is a man called uva by frederick parkman this is another literary fiction where we just get to see about the life of a person named uva who is a very old man okay i'm saying that this book will be boring in the beginning because we see our main character who is a man that's 60 plus in age and very suicidal inside his head the first 60 to 70 pages of the book seems like it is heading towards no particular direction but the way in which the author builds the story and shows us uva's life through flashbacks and present moments also is incredibly engaging and very very heartwarming you will feel super warm inside your heart and you'll just feel so so happy you'll want to have uva in your life it's that kind of a good book so if you're reading this and planning to drop it down or dnf it because it seems like it's heading towards no particular direction please don't do it because after that 50 or 70 page mark many things turn and it's an incredibly heartwarming tale so yes guys those are the 10 books in this list which i thought that start out a bit rocky in the beginning but as you keep on reading them they get far better and towards the end they become very very satisfying if you found this video useful in some way don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it to your friends if you want to get more content from me do subscribe to the channel because i publish new videos every tuesday thursday and saturday thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day